Good morning, everybody. We are over here at Bounding Into Comics and following Bob Chapek's ouster as Disney CEO, New Rumor. New Rumor. Claims Kathleen Kennedy will get the boot from Lucasfilm in Star Wars. Hmm. Where have I heard that one before? Where have I heard that before? Couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you for the life. Oh! Doomtap. That's right. Doomtap has been saying that for a while. I don't, and Hans Koch, too, I believe. I don't know. There's a couple There's a couple uh, clowns out there on YouTube that have been joking about this for a minute. But let's get into this article. This came out yesterday from John F. Trent. Soon after Bob Chapek was fired as the CEO and the company announced his predecessor, Bob Iger, would be returning for a two-year stint. A new rumor surfaced that Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy might be on Iger's chopping block. And this is so funny because literally, as I joke around about it, as I do the uh, the Doomcock impressions, as I do the Doomtap gimmick and all that, you know, with my lab behind me. Um, it is. It's just, it's fucking hilarious that this is, this is now, on like Iger is now, oh, Iger might fire Kathleen Kennedy. Trust me, I want her to be gone. She doesn't need to be there anymore. But Disney, if they sold Lucasfilm to somebody who actually gave a damn and wasn't garbage, it would be so much better. So much the better. YouTuber John Campia first shared his opinion that he believes Iger returning entrenches Kennedy at Lucasfilm. I don't see why not. I mean, he's co-signed all of her nonsense. Why wouldn't this? I, I don't know, but these people are idiots. None of them are honest. Um, he explained, Bob Iger has traditionally been a Kathleen Kennedy ally, and with Bob Iger coming back, that will entrench her even more. She will probably stay out until the end of her contract. That's what I figure is going to happen, because she's a powerful woman, and you cannot fire a powerful woman in Hollywood. Especially one that's a legacy name, uh, like Kennedy, you know, married into the Marshall family. I don't think she lasts beyond the end of this new contract she got. I think she's out either by or shortly after 2025 i think she's out i do think she needs to move on i've said that for a long time but i think Iger coming back only more entrenches her there he added well john campy is an idiot to begin with i mean this guy's a shell he's he's just a pathetic excuse for a man and yeah what a maroon <laughs> what an ignoramus <laughs> what a tarara goon da However, he then indicated he received information contrary to his own analysis. Campia detailed, This is what I have heard. I have heard that the decision to remove Kathleen Kennedy has already been made and she will be gone either sometime or before very, very, very shortly thereafter the release of Indiana Jones 5, which is going to be a absolute dumpster fire. I'll guarantee it. That movie is going to be shit, especially if they do move forward and... Uh, use Phoebe Waller-Bridge to take the place of Indiana Jones. Ooh. Ooh. Campia says, Now I want to be very, very, very clear here. I cannot independently say to you and confirm this is a fact. I will say that two of the people that have contacted me has a 1,000% average on things they've informed me of. So, yeah, that's uh, that could, it could very well happen. But, you know, who who knows? Who knows? I mean, it's just, yeah, it's at the whims of Bob Iger now. So, I like I said, I just don't see her going anywhere just because of her position in Iger. Poising for a potential presidential run, I just, I don't see it happening. Regardless of whether or not they fire Kennedy, Lucasfilm has driven the brand into the ground so much that analyst Valiant Renegade asserts that Star Wars is a dead brand given the Nielsen streaming ratings for the Rogue One spinoff series, Andor. And I'm not a, uh, <laughs> I'm not a financial analyst, but it doesn't take a financial analyst to tell you that Disney has driven Star Wars into the ground. I, I mean, a little research will tell you that, but, you know, most people aren't. Most people aren't motivated enough to do their own research when it comes to this kind of stuff, you know. The series has seen its viewership fall to 418 million minutes viewed for the week of October 17th through the 23rd, the week of the release of Andor's seventh episode. 
Yeah, I, I, I watched three episodes of it, and everybody's telling me it's pretty good. But I just, I don't know, I, I, I just gave up. I was like, eh. And like I said, I didn't hate it either. I didn't hate it. The blame just doesn't lie with Kennedy, though. It was Bob Iger who empowered Kennedy and stayed with her through the disastrous sequel trilogy. That is a fact. He absolutely did, which is why him coming back doesn't lend credence to me that she'll be fired. In fact, two years after the release of The Last Jedi, Iger claimed Star Wars didn't have a storytelling problem, he told the New York Times. I think the storytelling capabilities of the company are endless because the talent we have at the company and the talent we have at the company is better than it's ever been in part because the influx of people from Fox. Instead, Iger spun a narrative about flooding the market. I just think we might have put a little bit too much out there in the marketplace too fast. Well, what a, now, Bobby, what do, you, what do you think about Marvel having, you know, 18 different fucking projects a year coming out? I, I mean, I'm being facetious, of course, but that's basically what we have from Marvel now is just this influx of just nonsense, and all they want you to do is... Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. Not only did Iger loud Kennedy and the talent at Lucasfilm, but in his book, The Ride of a Lifetime, Lessons Learned from 15 Years as CEO of the Walt Disney Company, Keep on rolling, baby. He admits that he betrayed George Lucas. Oh, wow, Bobby. I mean, I feel like we should be marching around playing the trumpet, throwing confetti. You know, he admitted he betrayed the maker of the franchise. He wrote, The truth was, Kathy, J.J., Allen, I believe they're talking about Alan Horn, and I had discussed the direction in which the saga should go. We all agreed that it wasn't what George had outlined. George knew we weren't contractually bound to anything, but he thought that our buying the story treatments was a tacit promise that we would follow them, and he was disappointed that his story was being discarded. Now, he was going to lean in on, I believe it was the Wills of the Force for the sequel trilogy George was. I don't see that as, I I don't know though. I don't know. I don't know as much about the Wills of the Force. Uh, I'm not a big EU guy. I am reading Tales of the Bounty Hunters right now. Uh, I'm on the IG-88 saga. This book came out in 1996. I've had it for, I don't know, years and years. I found it at my mom's house about five years ago. And it's like I've been trying to read it. And I started reading it to my son. When, this is a quick side story. When I like, it was like a couple years ago, and he just he loved Star Wars, but a book like that, he just wasn't into it. Now, you know, he's what seven and a half. He really likes it. You know, the story about IG eighty eight really has him uh, enthr- enthralled because we, you know, he's got a couple of the IG eighty eight figures, and he wanted to know more about him. So I'm like, well, this is a story specifically about him. So he really digs that. Point being, these are the kind of stories they have out there to adapt. But no, you chose to go another direction, which we all know how that went and is still currently going. I'd been so careful since our first conversation not to mislead him in any way, and I didn't think I had now. But I could have handled it better. I should have prepared him for the meeting with JJ and Michael and told him about our conversations that we felt it was better to go in another direction. Well, shows how much you know, Bobby. No shit about fuck. I could have talked through this with him and possibly avoided angering him by not surprising him. Now, in the first meeting with him about the future of Star Wars, George felt betrayed. And while this whole process would never have been easy for him, we'd gotten off to an unnecessarily rocky start, he admitted. Well, yes, you betrayed... You, I mean, okay, so them purchasing Star Wars really didn't financially bind the... Or it didn't... There was no contract for them to use his treatments that they bought. You know, they bought them. They're theirs to do with as they please at that point. I'm not saying what they did was right at all. I'm not siding with Disney because fuck Disney. But in their Star Wars garbage. But uh, like I said, for the most part, what they've put out has just been bad. Like Rogue One is acceptable. The first three episodes of Andor were good. Um, I've enjoyed The Mandalorian to a certain extent. The Book of Boba Fett was garbage. I couldn't make it through more than three episodes of Obi-Wan and... My son included. He didn't want to keep watching it. And I'm probably leaving something out somewhere along the lines, but I don't. The Star Wars animation thing um, that had some anime. Like, there was one good story in that, and the rest of it I just... I I tuned it out. Tuned it out. It was garbage. Um, Back in March 2021, George Lucas made it abundantly clear that Disney took Star Wars in a different direction than he had intended. He was asked, 
The world has changed so much since the first Star Wars movie. How do you think the changes in the fight for racial justice will impact the Star Wars universe going forward? See, that is such a stupid question. That is such a stupid question. Star Wars, okay, do you remember the opening crawl at the beginning of the first movie? A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. They don't have the same problems with racial bullshit that we have. Hell, most of our racial problems are conflated by the media, but people are too stupid to realize it or actually, as I said earlier, do their own research and find things out for themselves. But no, they'll rather just turn the TV on, absorb and repeat what they hear on the TV without any use of critical thinking skills. That's the problem. People are lacking critical thinking skills. But I got off topic there. Um, Lucas replied, I don't know. This is to the point about Star Wars fighting racial just for racial justice. <laughs> just, I Look, I believe in equality. I don't believe in equity. Equity is a bullshit leftist Marxist garbage tier fucking agenda. Equality is what we should all strive for and what we deserve. Uh, out, equal outcomes are not guaranteed. The outcome is only what you put in. Lucas replied, I don't know. I mean, I kind of lost control of Star Wars, so it's going off in a different path than what I intended. But the first six Star Wars films are very much mine and my philosophy. And I think that philosophy sort of goes beyond any particular time because it's based on history. It's based on philosophy. It's based on a lot of things. Boom, baby! It's not based on contemporary politics, which means it's timeless. George knew what he was doing, folks. George knew what he was doing, and he just proved it. Ha! Boom, baby! So do I think Kathleen Kennedy is going to get canned? Look, folks, I wish I could tell you, I wish I could tell you that I fought the good fight and Kathleen Kennedy was fired on Monday morning at 8.15, just like Doomcock has been saying for 17 fucking years. But this is no fairy tale. This is Disney, and they're woke as fuck. They won't fire a woman. No, I, I really don't think they're going to fire her. I, I mean, like I said, what the fuck do I know? I could be wrong, but this this ghoul of a woman deserves to be fired. I mean, absolutely deserves to be fired. She has done nothing but perpetuate everything and, and just go on to prove us right at every turn with everything about her and all of her actions. So I, I, I want her to be gone. I want them to sell Star Wars God to somebody who cares about it. But, you know, will that happen? Probably not. It's Disney, unless Disney tanks completely. We, are, we do know they are having major financial issues, uh, especially, especially with the tanking at the box office of Strange World, which we got into that on the show last night. You can check the replay for that. Now it's your turn. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think Kennedy is actually gone this time? Do you, do you really think she's going to be gone after Indy 5 releases? They'll finally get rid of this, you know, cut the head off the snake, metaphorically speaking, as it were. I hope so. Your turn. Let me know. If today's the day I've earned it, please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget on your way out. Bitch, slap that like button for us over here. And also, two tiers to join. $2.99, $4.99. Kazooie and Harvey Wakuin producer tier. Check the main page of the channel for all the perks listed. I, I really appreciate all my channel members. Thank you guys for supporting us. Thank you. Big shout out to my editor. Extraordinary good stuff. Appreciate you, brother. And go over and subscribe to his channel's links are in the description to this video. I'm Etep Wakuin from the Place to Be Reviews. We've been here where it all use. If I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow, and I'll catch you on the next one. It's better to burn out than to fade away. I could do this all.